He caused a lot of problems with his subordinate officers. They wanted to know why they were stopping just a couple miles short of the Tuscumbia River. They wanted to get across, put a river between them and Corinth, the pursuing Union troops. And as a group, they went to General Van Dorn and questioned why he was doing such a thing. And they were floored by the response. General Van Dorn said, I'm not through. We're going to move to the south towards Rienzi, and then we're going to attack Corinth again from the south. General Morey, who was a friend of his, wrote down this very eloquent speech that he, he gave to Van Dorn about how brave you are and you're the only man I know that would run to such danger. Yeah, I think in real life he probably looked him in the eye and said, are you crazy? Because the Confederate Army had been so reduced during the Battle of Corinth, they had lost 19% of their effective force. They couldn't reattack Corinth, and they persuaded General Van Dorn of that fact. They couldn't do anything but continue the retreat towards Ripley. Well, in his plan to reattack Corinth, General Van Dorn had dispatched another group of his cavalry under a young brigadier general by the name of Frank Armstrong, and he sent them to Crumbs Mill, six miles to the south on the Hatchie River. There was another crossing at Crumbs Mill. There was a mill dam, and there was a trace over the top of that mill dam. The only other place besides Davis Bridge where you could safely cross wagons and artillery. The banks of the Hatchie are and were too steep to cross anywhere else. So he sent Armstrong down there to destroy the crossing at Crumbs Mill. Turned out to be a real bad decision because the morning of the 5th he found out that now he was pinned between two federal forces. Ord coming from the west, Rosecrans coming from the east. His way was blocked at Davis Bridge and he had just sent someone to destroy the only other crossing. He was in deep trouble. But when that artillery fire, that duel began, General Armstrong heard that six miles to the south. And there said, excuse me, General Morey said, with the eye and the ear of a true soldier, he understood what was occurring. And he sent a messenger up to General Van Dorn and said, I will rebuild the bridge, the crossing. Send the army down to Crumbs Mill. I will have it ready by the time you arrive. General Van Dorn was given an escape route by this very enterprising young officer. In the meantime, he had to deal with the threat of General Ord coming down the slope. These are all men under the brigade of Colonel James Veach. Veach is not a professional soldier. He's a lawyer. But he learned to be a soldier real quick. He fought extremely well at the Battle of Shiloh and was given command of this brigade. The men are under the 4th Division of Stephen Hurlbut. Stephen Hurlbut was a civilian before the war as well. Spent most of his time in South Carolina. He was a lawyer there but was run out of South Carolina. He was one of those fellows that would steal anything but a hot stove. Very corrupt. Also liked his drink. In his first command in Missouri, he was actually court-martialed for being incompetent and for being a drunk. General Grant gave him a second chance, and at the Battle of Shiloh, he redeemed himself. It was Hurlbut's men that defended the peach orchard for several hours on April 6th of 1862 at the Battle of Shiloh. He did extremely well. And it was his division that was posted at Bolivar and were the men to come down to try and stop Van Dorn's crossing of the river. Now I'm going to give you a chance to get a few drinks. You can look across the fence. This is where the 14th and 15th Illinois came down through this other field and stopped to realign their lines just beyond the small hill that was covered in corn.